How does joint ownership differ from a cohabitation agreement? And what are the advantages and disadvantages of each option? So the advantages and disadvantages for both options are going to be the same. They do two things, or excuse me, they do three things. Both a joint ownership and a cohabitation agreement accomplish the three goals of what did we do, what are we going to do, and how are we going to end it. And what I mean by what did you do is how much money did you put into the property? This is, I put in $60,000 of the down payment, you put in $40,000 of the down payment. All right, well, let's memorialize that so that there's no question about the equity put into it. Um, second, what are we going to do? <clears throat> well, are you responsible for the mortgage? Are you responsible for the insurance? What if you want to put in a hot tub and I don't? What if there's a repair that needs to be done and I don't have the money? What if I lose my job and we uh, don't have the funds on my side for a little bit? What if we rent out a room? Those kinds of obligations going forward are important to know ahead of time so that you can have the rules put in place. Mm -hmm. The last one is how do we get out of this? Um, <clears throat> just because you break up doesn't mean that the bank cares. And if you break up and move out of a house that you bought with somebody else, you are still on the hook for a house that they are living in. And conversely, just because you broke up doesn't mean the law says that they have to get out. If uh, you and I are in a relationship and you all of a sudden start bringing your, your new fling around, well, guess what? You own the house. You get to do that. And without some sort of rational, mature conversation about who does what when we break up for the cohabitation agreement anyway, um, there's there's just chaos. And what we try and accomplish in a cohabitation agreement is, all right, who is it that's more financially able to stay in the house? Who is it that's more financially able to assume or refinance the note into their name? Because getting off of that mortgage is always going to be one of the top three in priorities. And then who is it that's bringing more money to the table? It doesn't make sense if you bring $100,000 as a down payment for me to stay in the house because I've got to find a way to get your equity back out. And so between the down payment, the principal pay down and the appreciation, I'm probably the one that needs to get out of the house because I'll get a lower number to get bought out of that house. And so those are really the big things that we try to deal with a cohabitation agreement. Joint ownership agreement where there's two individuals that are living together or like I said, the situation of parents um, owning property with their child is less about uh, breakups. Although you can break up with a friend just as much as you can with a, a romantic partner, it seems to be less prickly though. Um, but for those joint ownership agreements, the important things that are different than a cohabitation agreement is what do we do if we move into a new house? What do we do if we want to rent out a room? For the parent-child relationship, you know, you if you own 50% of a house with your parents and they've got a homestead claim somewhere else, well then you're only getting um, to claim 50% of the, the cap on your homestead for the property taxes. And so there's implications there about the uh, advantages and disadvantages. What are the disadvantages? Well, somebody usually, whether you call it winning or losing, somebody has a sacrifice to make when you make these agreements. And you might not like that on the back end when your relationship is soured, but that's why we try and agree to it on the front end when there's a lot more rational thinking going on. One thing to especially take note is just how thorough it seems like this entire process is and your process to of handling these types of agreements. I mean, you cover <laughs> A through Z, it seems like. You even brought up scenarios that I would never had even thought of. That's that's quite amazing, actually. Well, people still find a way to... to Surprise find you? new ways to, to make things difficult. Um mm. You know, that it's it's human nature to make things unique. But, you know, we try and make things broad enough to be all-encompassing, but specific enough to be enforceable, which is the fine line of a good contract. Um, and I think that that's probably going to lead into our, our next topic.